Welcome back. We're joined now by the King's former Communications Secretary, Christina Kiriakou. She's going to reveal her thoughts on Harry and Meghan's uh, new Morning. series. Watch, you've watched the first three episodes, uh, as indeed everybody has it here. Um, I think Netflix may have crashed at some stage uh, today. Um, your initial thoughts? You sat down here and said, well, that's a bit underwhelming. Yeah, I think for the, the general public around the globe, it's a beautiful love story is what we see play out um, in the first episode. Um, and it's quite interesting to see all those nuances of how they met, which we haven't really seen no. before with members of the royal family. Um, I think the other undercurrent that comes through very, very strongly is Harry's intrinsic deep suspicion and paranoia of the media. Would you call it paranoia? I think it's paranoia. And, and, and I think it's understandable that he feels like that. And he has a deep mistrust, which clearly dates back to when his mother was alive, not to mention the unfortunate timing of her death. So that's what we see play out. I think from the trails, we were expecting a little bit more um, in the first three episodes and perhaps some warring between members of the royal family and that isn't there. There's slight inferences but but that isn't there at all which which was really heartening to see I, I think. So from that trailer I mean like everybody else that the family I imagine would have been sort of poised and ready for the worst because that would be the sensible thing to do. Having I mean would they watch it? I mean, did, would they actually sit and watch this or would they just be advised? I don't believe they would. I think uh, usual form is that aides would watch it. If they wanted to know, they'd ask, um, you know, give us a quick overview. I don't think they have the time to no. watch it. And equally, I think what we have seen from the trails is that the trails are slightly manipulated. They've allowed us all to believe there's this hugely sensationalist element. Now, of course, that could come in the final three episodes. Um, we don't know. We haven't seen those. But in the first three episodes, it's very much Harry and Meghan telling their story, how they felt about one another and how they felt about the intrusion of media as members of the royal family. Mm -hmm. um, and I expected more because of the media manipulation and the Netflix trailers, mm. but that wasn't... Well, bearing in mind that um, and if, it, if this has cost 88 million, um, any TV company or platform that is making a series of documentaries with such top property is going to make their trails as attractive as possible to get as many people watching. That's what they want to do, uh, to make a bit of their money back, maybe. However, I would have thought that the word will get back to those senior members of the royal family who will surely today be thinking, phew, OK. Yeah, what I, as I say, I personally was heartened by the content and I think that word will get back that it wasn't what was being billed. Um, and certainly if I was still communications secretary, I would be giving a very, very uh, anodyne overview. I, I would absolutely be saying, uh, sir, ma'am, this really is, you know, a documentary told in their own words. There's no spiteful nurse, mm. there's no nasty nurse. It's very much from the heart. You can see Harry's pain, I think. I, I, I think you can really see his pain. Yes, points. absolutely. Yeah. And you can see, you hope that this is quite cathartic for him telling the story in this way. And I guess that's my thought is, will this be an end to this series of stories? There was, um, there was, I mean, as far as the King's concerned, there was some lovely footage of the boys when they were younger, you know, of, of Prince Charles as he was then, sort of putting a, a cloth over his head and sort of playing peekaboo like any doting father would. So in that way, you were seeing things as him as a father that it was a very positive, bright, shining light. Oh, absolutely. And for me, seeing that footage, uh, as, as I'm sure everybody else, it, it, it absolutely shows that they were all a very, very loving family. And I, I can remember a long time ago walking around the gardens of Highgrove with the then Prince of Wales, Charles, and he pointed to this enormous urn and he said, oh, that's the urn that Harry went missing in. <laughs> and Harry had chosen to take a sleep in the afternoon sunshine oh. in this 
his urn and no one could find him for hours on oh end. Gosh, and then he crawled out of the urn. So they were a loving, loving family with japes like, like any family yeah. would have. There's a, you look at aspects of wedding day, who can come, who can't come, um, what's the best way to do this. All of those, you look at any family of, of any income, any status, any country, really, uh, that these are, these are human things played out, that families get on, then they don't get on, and then things go wrong. And there is always a sadness when you look at someone else's family or your own family or their family, and you've said were a number of times there, that it seems a shame that all that fell apart. Yes, I... For me, I believe that... Um, Harry and Meghan will still have a relationship with their family. They have young children now themselves, and I think this is a process that they need to go through. Indeed, what you do see from these documentaries is that they were filming video diaries from before they actually left the UK for this documentary. So this is something they've had in mind for a long time. It's clearly a part of their personal journey to mend and heal. And I hope and I believe that any rifts that are apparent within the royal mm. family, if indeed there are rifts within the royal family, will heal in the same way. What I do know is that the king is devoted to his sons mm. and to Harry. And I cannot imagine that there will be any form of petulance or nastiness or immediate responses um, or knee-jerk reactions to any of this. They'll take a sanguine view, they'll look at the long term and they'll believe in the institution of family, mm. which is mm. what the royal family are about. But, but they are like any family, exactly as you said, Philip. Just to quickly make a point that I made to Vanessa, they are like any family. You watch how what their lives were like, both the boys, when they when they were growing up, and that intrusion and that pressure. And then he said, quite quite rightly, there were some front pages which were true. You know, he did put a couple of feet mm. wrong. He did make mistakes, but it was then worldwide. What does that do to your head? What did you see that? And you are inside that bubble and your life is under scrutiny to that degree, you are still a normal human being, regardless of status. What does that do to your head? I, I think what we're seeing is, to the extreme, is what it's done to Harry. And, and Harry has a deep mistrust now, and he just wants to protect, protect, protect anything that he loves. And of course he feels like that because of what happened mm. to his mother. As Camilla Tomini was saying, subsequently, in the UK, there's been the Leveson inquiry and private lives are ostensibly private. They've now gone to the US and what is interesting is that they have chosen to pursue celebrity culture out there. So I heard you saying earlier, Holly, you know, is, is it that the life they were escaping is, was the royal life? Yeah. Um, it seems like that, that is what is the case, that they are now pursuing a celebrity lifestyle in the States, but they don't want a lifestyle where they're told what to do and where they're part of a formation. Mm -hmm. And they're not the top tier of that formation. And those are the sad facts of the royal family. There, there is a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. That's the way the monarchy yeah. works. Yeah. It's not something that the current king has decreed. It's not something that Her Majesty decreed. It's the way it works. And Meghan and Harry were never going to be the top tier of that, that hierarchy. So perhaps the state suits them better. It's a world that Meghan Markle knows from suits. It's, it's, you know, an entertainment world. And I think maybe it's just better suited to them to be out there. But I, the question that I ask is, will this now end? Will this um, telling of their story of woe now end? Because they've already done Oprah. There's been uh, chosen biographers releasing books. There's another book coming out in January. There's this enormous 88 million pound series. And will they move on yeah. from this mm. and just devote their lives to good, which is to why work, they move there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank thank you. you, as always. It's lovely having you here. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you.